Hello uh, traders. Before I begin, I want to take a moment to thank each and every person that has taken the time to like and comment on my last educational video. The support has truly been tremendous and the comments very humbling. So thank you very much for everybody that did like, did follow and did comment on that on that post. If you haven't seen it yet, then please do check it out on my profile. It's called understanding price structure. So in this video, I'll be taking a look at Bitcoin. Now, certainly most traders, or I'd probably guess all traders will know what Bitcoin is. It's an asset that's come from nowhere and is now taking over the financial world, right? But how many people actually know what it is and why it's so popular with investors? Most people still only understand Bitcoin as a speculative asset, purely something that has kept on growing in value, but maybe not fully understood the reasons for this rise and why these themes are developing and what is driving the future rise in value. That's what we'll be delving into in this video. So Bitcoin, it really is the first time that we as a society have tried to create the perfect money. When I refer to money, I mean in the sense of a way to store your wealth, to store value. But firstly, before we can assess and understand Bitcoin in this respect, we need to understand what is money? Or should I say, what should money be like? Because I guess in recent times, it seems that central bankers particularly might have forgotten. So in fundamental terms, in the most simple aspects, there are two key aspects to sound money. The first one is that you're able to maintain its value through time. Secondly, secondly, the other property that money should have is it's easily transferable over distance. This second property is referred to commonly as the velocity of money. How quickly can money move around the financial system when we need it? So let's first consider that first question, maintaining value over time. And as a reference point, to explain Bitcoin and, and why it is so good in this respect and why so it's so popular with investors is, uh, I'll refer it to the British pound as a reference point because the, the pound is the oldest currency still used. The pound is approximately 1,200 years old, born in around 775 AD when sterlings or silver pennies were the main currency in Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. If you had 240 of these, then you would have one pound in silver weight, a pound in weight. Now, that's a vast fortune back in the 8th century. So when it was first created, the British pound was exchangeable for one pound of silver. That's how it's got its name, of course a perfect ratio of one to one in value. Now, if we skip forward to 2021, however, one British pound, unfortunately, doesn't buy anywhere near one pound of silver. In fact, it takes around 175 pounds to buy a pound of silver. So let's consider then why has this happened? Why is this the case? What has changed over time? Now, it's clear, I think, to most people that a pound of silver still weighs the same and its chemical makeup is still exactly the same. So that means that the only thing that's changed is the British pound has become worth less. So you need more of them to buy the same amount of silver. The explanation for this is simply that the British pound has become less rare. Whereas before one British pound was a vast fortune in the 8th century, I, not many people had a pound. Now you can find one down the back of your sofa, for example. So to be clear, the rarity of silver hasn't stayed the same. It has actually become less rare itself, but to a much, much, 
much less extent. Uh, so over time, of course, we've found more silver. Or it's been mined and found in many different areas. So the the underlying concept that will give sound money value over time is its rarity. Now that's really important when it comes to Bitcoin, and I'll move on to that in a in a moment because. I think most people probably understand if you compare fiat money, so the pound, I think most of us know that this these are going to be worth less than a precious metal. So maybe it's not a fair comparison. But let's look at maybe um, comparing silver to gold, for example. And what you'll end up seeing is that over time, gold has been a much better val store of value than silver has. And... The reason why this is the case is exactly the same. It's because gold is rarer than silver. So we always come back to that concept of the reason of what will give money value over time and solving one of its key aspects of whether or not it will be a good store of value is its rarity. To explain that a little bit more, um, Ultimately, there is less gold in the world than silver. It's just a less common compound that is found naturally. Um, and secondly, the total supply of gold actually moves much slower. Um, it's a little bit harder to produce and many other aspects. But in total, the supply of gold grows around 2% a year. But silver itself actually grows between 20 to 30% a year. The other word for this growth of money is inflation. That's what you'll probably hear a lot of currently in um, any financial media or any commentary. Really important concept. So now that we know probably the best store of value over time that we know of right now is gold, let's compare that to Bitcoin. Bitcoin supply is fixed. It is completely hardwired into the code of Bitcoin at its creation that there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in the world. Now, while it may also be true that gold supply is fixed to some extent, we don't know the exact number of how much ounces of gold there are in the world. We can guess, but we don't know exactly. And also as well, we don't, gold is a natural compound. It exists elsewhere in the universe. An example was that it was found on the moon. So it's entirely possible that over time, technology will allow us to start mining gold elsewhere on planets or asteroids, which means that realistically, the total supply of gold can increase and it can, it can become more common. It can become less rare. That can't happen with Bitcoin. And equally so, having this finite number of total supply is very important for a financial system to operate well. So it enables people to calculate financial aspects such as risk. It allows you to um, apply proper yield to, to loans and all these elements that get tied into a financial economy. So... The thing to remember there is, first and foremost, Bitcoin is a lot more rare than anything else that we've used as money previously. And also as well, that Bitcoin doesn't increase its rate of supply at all. In fact, it reduces it over time until ultimately it will get to zero. There will be no more Bitcoins to be found. The other word for this would be deflation. Now, in that sense... Bitcoin is the only deflationary asset in the world. Everything else, even gold, does grow to some extent, although it may well be small. But also very interesting is to note the elasticity of supply. How much could supply move if it needed to? Let's say, as an example, on the market open, gold was suddenly worth £1 million an ounce. Well, I can bet you every pound that I've got that the next day, every gold miner in the world would be in work early, digging, mining without a lunch break and doing overtime. 
In other words, they would mine more gold. Its supply would be elastic. It would go up. However, on the other hand, Bitcoin, if that was worth a million pounds on market open, then the laws of Bitcoin, its code, mean that regardless of however many miners that there are, it would still take 10 minutes to mine one Bitcoin. That's approximately about 600 seconds every 10 minutes. All else being equal, it would take around 72 terawatts of power to mine one Bitcoin using the average power usage by an ASIC miner, the, the miners that are used to mine Bitcoin. So it doesn't matter how, um, how much the demand of Bitcoin will go up, its supply will be the same. And that's extremely rare. There is nothing else, it's the only asset in the world ever created where its supply is independent from its demand. So that means that realistically, if that demand keeps on rising, the value will keep on rising. So I think it's quite clear to see that when it comes down to rarity of money that we can use or that has been tried to be used, Bitcoin certainly is the best option that we've got in rarity. Now let's explore that second uh, property of sound money that needs to have. How, far, how easy is it to be transferred over distance? And quite simply, without having a really long explanation of it, in this aspect, there really isn't any comparison. Bitcoin can be sent anywhere in the world that has an internet connection with ease using only a mobile phone. In contrast, it's vastly more expensive to move gold anywhere. It requires loads of security, lots of risk any time that it's not stored in a vault. So it's clear to see that when it comes to how easily can you and safely transfer your wealth anywhere compared to between um, Bitcoin and gold, there's no comparison. So it ticks two of the fundamental aspects of what is sound money. As a store of value, Bitcoin is much better at being gold than gold is. So what does this mean for the future? Currently, Bitcoin has a market cap of $950 billion with a B, while gold is actually over $10 trillion with a T. So $10 trillion compared to currently about $950 billion. Um, I th actually, um, I think that since I looked at those stats, I think now that Bitcoin has passed over $1 trillion. Just about. So even if Bitcoin's market cap equals gold, and we already know its supply will stay exactly the same, we know that that won't move, it tells us that the price of Bitcoin could be around 476,000 per Bitcoin. That's 10 trillion divided by 21 million Bitcoins that will be in existence. A really simple and crude way to work out the value. However, there are many other calculations that uh, people have tried to use to potentially work out its value. One of these is called realized market cap, which may be a little bit of a better way to understand um, how much the true market cap of Bitcoin is, how much money has been invested, how much dollars have been invested into Bitcoin. Because this realized market cap, it takes the total amount of dollars that were invested at that price of Bitcoin was valued at, at the time of purchase, if that makes sense. Under this metric, Bitcoin is currently only has around 2% of the market cap of gold. So on this metric, the same amount of dollar worth was invested into Bitcoin as there is currently in gold then each Bitcoin would actually be worth well over $1 million. Now, these are just crazy numbers, I think, that at this moment in time. Who knows if it will get there? But what we're looking to try to explore in this video, I'm not trying to make price predictions and things like that, but I'm simply trying to explain why Bitcoin has managed to rise from where it was previously, you know, in 
pence to now being valued over $50,000 per Bitcoin. Why is that the case? And is there any fundamental reason why that can continue? And there certainly is when we look at the fundamentals of if Bitcoin starts to be used as money, like it has been lately, you could see Tesla, other corporations are buying Bitcoin as a store of value to mean that their dollars lose value, but their Bitcoin will maintain their value. So if this continues, who knows where Bitcoin can get to? But we'll be watching it and we'll be commentating on it. And ultimately, we'll openly say that we're invested into Bitcoin. So with that being said, let's um, stay watching this crazy market. And if you've got any questions, feel free to, to ask me. I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, please make sure that you like, comment, follow my profile for more of these types of videos. And please do share this video with anybody that you think may find it useful. Thanks very much for listening, guys.